Thank you for joining me, citizens of Gotham. This is the People's Channel. One of the ways is the People's Channel is you submit stories and articles and topics to me for me to cover because I'm just one guy, you know, I'm just a guy in his apartment. You know what I mean? <laughs> just got done making a vegan smoothie. So that's why I could use your help. We've also been demonetized for over two years. So a great way to support this channel is do what Emilio Pereira did and go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood and submit a topic, which is, um, it basically fuels the suspicion that I had, and I'm sure many of you had, about weapons the United States is sending to Ukraine that are now being sold on the black market and making their way back to drug cartels in Mexico. This sounds crazy, this sounds outlandish, but I'm gonna show you a video in a second from a mainstream Latin American news outlet. It's in Spanish, it's got English subtitles. They're doing journalism the way America should be. They're actually reporting on stuff. America has a propaganda machine, so we we can't get stories like this. Like literally, this has to be this has to be done. It's it's a news outlet in Latin America that is sent to me by one of you through my Patreon. That's how we have. That's how I found out found out about this. It's crazy. So let's let's show you what this is. Here we go. El martes aquí. Recordará, y si no, se lo voy a mostrar de nuevo. El, le mostramos imágenes grabadas en Matamoros, Tamaulipas. Ahí aparece un presunto integrante del cártel del Golfo cargando dos armas. En la mano izquierda, una K-47 y en el hombro derecho, lo que expertos nos aseguran ahora es un lanzacohetes antitanques AT-4 de fabricación sueca y usado por el ejército de Estados Unidos. En un inicio habíamos dicho que se trataba de un Javelin. Los expertos nos corrigen y nos dicen que es un arma igualmente. Eh, un arma enviada por miles a Ucrania. Un presunto miembro del cártel del Golfo en Tamaulipas fue grabado portando una de las armas más exclusivas y poderosas, que en teoría se vende únicamente en el ejército y ha sido utilizado durante la invasión a Ucrania, por ejemplo. En el mercado negro, esa arma que lleva a su derecha, la otra es una K-47, a la derecha lleva esta arma que cuesta en el mercado negro unos entre 20.000 y 60.000 dólares. 20 mil y 60 mil dólares y cada disparo cuesta aproximadamente 30 mil dólares. AT4 es el nombre correcto del arma. Bueno, tras darse a conocer estas imágenes, hubo acciones internacionales. La embajada de Rusia en Twitter aseguró que este tipo de armas se envían a Ucrania, criticó que sean suministradas desde Occidente ganando mucho dinero y que ahora las consecuencias de esto se ven en México. Ha acusado a funcionarios ucranianos de establecer canales de suministro de armas recibidas de Occidente con el mercado negro mundial, lo que afecta la seguridad de las regiones. También en Estados Unidos se dieron repercusiones. Varios personajes criticaron la política exterior de Joe Biden, uno de ellos el aspirante a la presidencia, Vivek Ramas Van, quien aseguró que de llegar a la Casa Blanca va a aniquilar a los cárteles mexicanos. No halfway around the world, end up south of our own border in the hands of narco-terrorist Mexican drug cartels. That shows how perverse our military-industrial complex and our foreign policy really is. La información que aquí transmitimos también fue replicada en varios medios internacionales, como el portal Daily Star en Reino Unido, que cuestionó el uso de estas armas por parte del crimen organizado en México. El medio ruso RT News cuestiona el que un arma de Estados Unidos, que Estados Unidos envió a Ucrania, fue vista en manos de un cártel mexicano. Mientras el First Post de India destacó que el lanzacohetes fabricado en Estados Unidos había fallado en su objetivo, pues de estar destinado a ir a Ucrania terminó en un cártel mexicano. Aún no hay reacciones, hemos pedido reacciones, ya hay reacciones en Estados Unidos, en Rusia, en otras partes del mundo. Aún no hay reacciones de las autoridades mexicanas, pero seguiremos insistiendo. That's insane. So there's two insane things that are happening here. First of all, American-made weaponry 
we're, we're giving all these weapons to Ukraine and they're ending up in Mexico? First of all, like this is unreal. And then the second thing, there's nothing. Let's go to CNN's dot, CNN.com right now. I want to go to CNN right now. This is real time. Here's what CNN is going to say about this. CNN, probably this is front page news on CNN. From, oh, Trump pleads not guilty to mishandling classified intelligence documents. Okay, a former president getting indicted. And all right, that's news. Trump, Trump thing, Trump sent zip, Trump thing, Trump and off, Trump a thing, Trump, Trump, Trump. Judge allows Gene Carroll to mantra of Trump, Trump of the Trump. Cormac McCarthy dies. Okay, Russian accounts admit Ukrainian forces are making some gains in heavy fighting. So Ukraine's winning the war, apparently. That, that's the narrative. White House press secretary violated Hatch Act. There's nothing about it here. There's nothing about it. There's nothing about it. There's nothing here. This should be front page news. All these international outlets cover it, Mexico, India, even the UK. RT obviously covered it, but we can't get RT here. <laughs> they shut that they shut that network down. So we're we're So now what what's going to happen if the drug cartels in Mexico shoot this at an American citizen? What if they go to the border and engage our own border security with our weaponry? And the Republicans are, you know, I'm going to say it's Joe Biden's. Yeah, yeah, sure. This is Joe Biden's awful. I wouldn't vote for Joe Biden, but this is the two party system. If Trump was in the White House, he'd be sending weapons to Ukraine. He'd be forced to do it. Because both parties, remember now, both parties, overwhelming bipartisan support for weaponry to the Ukraine. Both parties, both parties every year since 9-11 for the last 21 years now have voted to increase the military budget. They did it under Bush. They did it under Obama. They did it under Trump. And they now have done it under Biden. It doesn't matter who controls the House or the Senate. The military always gets more weaponry. So now our own and we've seen this before. We've armed this group and that group, and then we're fighting against our own weaponry. And who benefits from this? The military industrial complex. They get all that's their they get the profits. So this is insane. These and, and look at the pricing that that woman was talking about. These are 30,000 each, 60,000 each. The ro each each rocket is like 30 grand. Wow. I'm so glad American tax dollars are helping the drug cartels in Mexico kill each other and kill innocent civilians in Mexico. What? We have a homeless problem throughout this country. It's really bad in Los Angeles. It is so bad. I mean, I saw a dead body of the police covering up a dead homeless man and the medical examiner's car pull up. I mean, it is unreal. There's a housing crisis in terms of you can't afford the rents here are out of control. The only people that still live at the beach that I know are all, it's all rent control. Everyone's had to leave. Everyone's moved. No one can afford to live anywhere. And this isn't, I mean, it's really bad in like LA, New York, San Francisco, but rents nationwide are out of control. All of you tell me this. And I've traveled around this country a fair amount the last year or so, and I've, I've heard people say the same thing. The rents are out of control. BlackRock owns all this real estate and then deliberately keeps properties open, or, um, um, uh, unavailable to drive up rents. Meanwhile, we're funding a ridiculous proxy war that is just destroying Ukrainians and Ukrainian lives. We're not helping Ukrainian people at all. Yeah, Russia's bad. Trump shouldn't have invaded, but we pushed him into this. There's no way we would stand for Russia putting a base on our border. And now our weaponry is in the hands of the Mexican drug cartel. Awesome. Sounds great. We have an insane system here. But what did I show you in 2020? Right? What did I show you in 2020? The, I'll show you this again. 
because you need to see it because it, it relates to everything we're talking about. So this is what I showed you was the donations from the defense industry in 2020. Right? There it is. So I know it's small print, but the top three, well, the third place is Bernie Sanders at 800,000. That's what he got in donations in 2020. In second place, Donald Trump, 2.7 million. Number one spot, Joe Biden, 3.1 million. So they hedged their bets. The defense industry like, whoever gets in the White House, we're going to make sure there's war. We're going to make sure there's war. Follow the money, connect the dots, get the truth. Your tax dollars are now funding the Me Mexican drug cartel. Are you okay with that? But keep voting for these two parties. Keep voting for these awful corrupt parties. And, you know, it's... This is what it's going on. We should be protesting in the streets like they're doing in France. France protests in the streets just for two extra years. And we, so you think about that. You think about that. I want you to think about every day you see something, some street not fixed. Your public transportation in your town isn't that great. There's homeless people everywhere. So they cut some funding at your kid's school or something like that. Oh, we can't do student debt forgiveness. How are we going to forget? Oh, there's no money for Medicare for all. I want you to think of all those things that were being denied, but there's endless money for war. And now it's going in the hands of narco terrorists. Shave your knuckles for justice. Support our show, guys. I don't support narco terrorists. I don't own any weapons, any guns. Oh. Follow the money, connect the dots, get the truth. That's how we make Gotham great again. Shave your knuckles for justice. Boom.